Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bonehead Podcast, and we are at Entoyment Games in Pool today, who have very kindly lent us their RPG room and are allowing us to play with some Snotling gear. We've got the team, we've got the dice, we've got the spike, we've got the pitch. We're going to have a bit of an unbox and build. <laughs> First things first, let's have a look at the Snotling team itself. So, there is a ton of stuff in here. We've got four sprues and a billion bases. Let's get there to over. So, we've got two 32 mils for the pump wagons themselves. Um, roughly 75 billion 25 mil bases for the Snotlings. Um, and then we've got four sprues. So, let's get rid of the box for a sec. So you do actually get 20 of the 25 mil bases and two of the 32s and let's have a look at the sprue so let's start with the snotlings themselves so there's two sprues or two lots of two sprues there's a pump wagon sprue and a snotling sprue and you get two of each so let's have a look at the snotlings first of all see if we can get a bit of a close-up on the detail there um, look at that there is just an absolute thousand different bits and pieces so it looks like most of the snotlings are actually in two parts so i don't know if that allows any variation or whether they just are in such a dynamic pose that they need to be put together we'll find out in a minute when we build some but that looks to be all these snotlings and then this is the dream of all blood bowl players i'm sure is the pump wagon bits itself so there's an absolute ton of bits and we were warned about this but look, there's individual poles and things like that. When we build it in a minute, we'll find out whether or not that's so you can so you can add variety or whether they are just very pro-elf in the build. But you can see there, the detail is brilliant, uh, very clean, very cast, uh, cast very, very well, which you would expect now from Games Workshop Plastics. So let's get building. So I think it's probably worth having a look at the instructions. All of the Snotlings are two pieces every single one of them. I know we saw that when we were looking at the sprue. There's no variation, uh, but it is just because they are dynamic. So I thought I'd share that. But this is the terrifying thing. Look at the instructions for the pump wagon. Look at all of that. That's one, two, three, four pages of pump wagon. Okay, so that was hard work. Uh, I've built it. I'm pretty sure I built it slightly wonky, but luckily for me, I'm pretty sure that Snotlings uh, aren't that great at building things either. So that was probably one of the fiddliest models I've had to build uh, since I built the MI-24 helicopters with Team Yankee. That was really work, and I'm not overly happy with the final results. I'm probably going to end up taking it apart. As you can see, it does just about fit on the 32mm base which is a bit of a stretch. A 40 mil probably fit it better. I am tempted to pick up some 40s and just, you can do more with the basing that way. However, look at it. It is really cool. You got so much detail. I haven't added the crew yet because I want to paint this brown first and do the crew separately. Um, whether it's supposed to be wonky like that, I don't know, but that is a very um, complicated, but really fun miniature. Okay, so I needed to build something a bit simpler just to take the edge off the snotling pump wagon. And we've got our first fun hopper. These are pretty tiny chaps. It wouldn't be a Games Workshop Blood Bowl release without the dice. So let's have a quick look at the snotling dice. So uh, as you can see, they're pearl green with purple inlays. That's a cool little fungus symbol there as the six of the dice. And let's have a look at the block dice themselves. So they are the same colour, and they're not the most clear things in the world, but they're not terrible. 
So if you are after some dice that look like this, they kind of they'd work well for Nurgle or Underworld or things like that. They're pretty cool, uh, but they're not the most clear dice. And now let's have a look at the pitch. So it's packaged. It's packaged. It's actually sealed, vacuum sealed, with uh, the foam insert in there. Now I'm going to keep mine because actually traveling around with it that will stop it from sliding about. So that's actually quite useful. Let's have a look at the dugouts first. Okay, so what do we got? On one side, we've got the muddy effect. Sorry, right, trying not to get the glare on there. Muddy effect with panels, uh, swamps, mushrooms, everything you would expect. And on the other side, it is just the same. What's the difference? Mushrooms are out, mushrooms are less out. And now we'll try and show off the effect of the pitch. Obviously, the camera setup's not perfect for this, but we can see a lot of the detail on here. Uh, you got all the wooden boards, the ale, the toxic slime, the mushrooms. I mean, the pitch itself is this is what it's really, really, really well detailed. I like the coloring. You can see the markings, which is very important. So that's one side. Let's flip it over and have a look. And the other side is just way, way, way greener with lots more of this mud and goop. So let's have a look at the special rules. Uh, you've got the fungal bloom side, which is the, the brown muddy side. And then you've got the choking spores pitch, which is the more green side with more mushrooms. The pitches that Snotling teams use as their home grounds resemble more of a bog than a usable Blood Bowl pitch, something that can normally be attributed to the fact that Snotling teams win very few games and earn very little gold to improve their facilities. This makes games played on their festering quagmires deceptively dangerous, for the thick marsh that makes up the pitch can cause even the most sure-footed runner to become bogged down and the fungi that litter the playing surface are prone to expelling clouds of choking spores at seemingly random times. So let's have a look at the actual rules. Uh, the Snotling Fungal Bog Pitch has two sides, one depicting it in fair weather, though it is fair to say it is more of a bog than a pitch. The other side depicts it when the fungi that litter the ground unleash spores into the air. If both players agree, the following can be used to represent the unusual conditions. Fungal Bloom, so that is the brown side. Uh, do not roll on the weather table. Uh, instead, the game starts with perfect conditions. If a changing weather result is rolled during any kickoff, do not roll on the weather table. Instead, choking spores erupt from the fungi on the pitch with the following effects. The So this is the choking spores side, which is the lovely green and mushroomy side. The cloud of choking spores makes it hard for players to breathe and may force some players to leave the pitch to catch their breath. At the start of each team's drive, when this rule is in effect, Roll a d6. On a roll of one, a randomly selected player from the active team without the ball. Uh, randomly selected player, right? That player is forced to leave the pitch and is placed in the reserves. This does not cause a turnover. Additionally, to represent the boggy state of the pitch and the fact that the player's footing will be tested, the following rule is in play during games played on the snotling pitch. So this is both sides. Uh, whenever a player suffers the pushed result from a block or blitz, roll a d6. On a roll of a 1, the player loses their footing and falls down. Treat the result as defender down instead. Should another changing weather result be rolled, roll as normal. So, <laughs> interestingly, for a team that's strength 1, um, you kind of get a lot of pushes either thanks to dodge or just sometimes this happens so this actually makes it even worse on a one it counts as defender down that's not defender stumbles that's it counts as a pow if you get a push on the other hand could be more useful if you're taking uphill die blocks um and this looks like a sort of watered down sweltering heat not bad i probably wouldn't use it but i do absolutely love the pitch this is the kind of pitch i would want to make a 3d version of and it might have to be something i consider Next up we have the most divisive part of that release, which is the Spike magazine, so Spike issue number 10. The reason it's divisive is because we've already seen the spoilers for the next uh, series of Blood Bowl, so the next version of Blood Bowl, Blood Bowl 2020, and um, we've done loads of spoilers on our channel, so I have no doubt you know it's coming. The Spike magazine does not have rules for the next season. It's only got the rules for the current season, so Blood Bowl 16. So we're going to have a look through it, but... Yes, technically, everything in this book is going to be out of date within the next few months. 
as ever we're going to try and do this uh, <laughs> without the shine but it's quite difficult with games workshop stuff so inside the front cover you get some lovely painted art of the snotlings uh, again I can't, I'm going to say this a billion times I imagine in this video but I love these models they've got so much character uh, you get the usual intro and then you just get a description of snotlings themselves and snotling teams uh, quite good I like the fluff of that one you've got a breakdown here of the positionals so fun hoppers stilty runners fungus flingers trolls and pump wagons um, I like the write-ups there's a lot of <laughs> That's a lot of good work here. Right, famous snotling teams. You'll know this from my uh, my reviews that I love these kind of things. So we've got one, two, three, four teams here. The Brutal Beinhofen Bonebreaker Brawlers. That sounds like a team that would end up in one of the Bonehead tournaments. Stupendous Sundertown Slime Slingers. The fabulous Fife Home Fungus Farmers. So I love seeing teams like that because they can inspire you um, to create your own or to actually model your team after one of those teams. Okay, here we go. We've got the roster. Uh, you would have already seen this, but you've got 0 to 16 snotlings, 0 to 2 fungus flingers, up to 2 fun hoppers, up to 2 stilty runners, up to 2 pump wagons, and up to 2 trolls at 60k for re rolls. So we're not going to cover what this team does because we're actually going to be doing that in our next podcast, episode 50, which will be out next week. We're going to talk about uh, Blood Bowl 2016 and 2020 for Snotlings. Uh, star players, nothing new here. You've got Bomber, you've got Fungus, you've got Helmet Wolf, Madcap Migs, Morgan Thorg, Nobler, Ripper, Scrapper, Ugroth, and Bob Bifford. Now, the sad thing is that most of these star players are going away initially in Blood Bowl 2020. In fact, Helmet Wolf, I think, is in there. Um, and so is Morg, but everybody else gets gone. Uh, and here's the the feature team, the Creek, the Crud Creek Nose Pickers. So you've got the highlights. You've got the Zelda Moon there, or the Fungus Flinger. So let's have a look at the quick look at their team. Um, unsurprisingly, none of the Snotlings have got a skill up apart from Pick the Terrible, who has Dauntless. I am a big fan of Dauntless on a Snotling. Um, I went to Birmingham Brawl a couple of years ago. And my entire goal was to take um, and sack the ball carrier with a snotling which i did uh stilty runner with sure feet that makes sense and what else have we got fun hopper no upgrades there no upgrades there so it's not a massively exciting star player team um for fan factor for rerolls uh, the team is only uh, 1.12 million so normally when you get these hall of fame teams they're what 2 million on the way to 2 million this team is a real small team, which doesn't surprise me because they've got really small players. Let's have a look at the special rule for this one. Put me in, coach. The mighty Crud Creek nose pickers place a lot of faith in the mysterious dwarf coach they picked up in a fungus brew tavern. So long as the coach is on the sidelines berating them, they believe there is always a chance of victory. This childlike belief inspires their fans, who love nothing more than surging onto the pitch in great numbers. The mighty Crud Creek nose pickers can purchase the riotous rookies inducement for 50,000 instead of 100,000. Uh, they gain an additional 3d3 plus 4 journeyman from riotous rookies instead of the normal 2d3 plus 1. And in addition, so long as the coach has not been ejected from the game, so you haven't argued a call and been sent off, the Crud Creek nose pickers can choose to remove d3 plus 1 players with swarming uh, from the reserves box and set them up on the pitch instead of the usual d3. So they get one extra person, uh, one extra snotling off the sideline and into the pitch. Okay, so we've got star player spotlight here we've got ripper bolgrot now you should all know ripper he had a profile on the community not long ago but he isn't in the blood bowl 2020 uh you've got career highlights you've got dirt from the dugout we've got fungus the loon i love the art in this um no change to fungus what do we got here career highlights again chat with the rat um and then we've got the actual snotling breakdown so it quickly details what the positionals are and kind of a little bit of detail about how to use them. So what's more, Snotlings are immensely maneuverable. Titchy adds an additional plus one modifier to all of their dodge rolls, which combined with Stunty allows them to move through tackle zones on a two plus with dodge giving a reroll if needed. This lets them get exactly where the opposition doesn't want them to be and sidestep keeps them there. So actually, that's a cool little briefing there on the players, especially if you've never run this team before which obviously none of us really have but we've all hopefully seen snotlings before you got the pump wagons 
you got trolls, you got stilty runners. Okay, starting roster. It talks about keeping it, uh, keeping the TV low, um, and then development. I love reading these because sometimes they're a bit crazy. So snotling, diving catch, catch, sure feet sprint, diving catch. Oh, sorry, diving tackle as well. Uh, double on a, on a double block, dirty player guard. Yeah, I like that. They've got the breakdown of uh, characteristic increases as well. That's quite useful. Pump wagons, guard, grab, break, tackle. I'm not sure about guard on a pump wagon. I don't think they're on the pitch long enough. Um, definitely, definitely for the trolls. Got some example setups there for defense and offense. Always good to look at. And we've got Nobler Blackwall. Look at that. If the model comes out looking anything like him <laughs> with the tongue stitched back on, I will be a very happy Blood Bowl player. So that's Nobler. Career highlights, the Green Machine, lesser known Snotling Star players. So this is not actually Snotlings. This is uh, Scrapper Sawhead, uh, Bomber Dribble Snot, Madcap Migs, and Ugroth Bolgrot. So lesser known star players that aren't actually Snotlings. Um, what a, <laughs> which is a bit of a shame. Oh, we'd love a, absolutely love a star player Snotling. So hopefully they'll have one come out. Inducements wise, you've got Riotous Rookie. So if you don't know what that is, it's 100k. Ogres and Snotling teams can take it. We saw this when the Ogre spike came out. We, we got the, uh, the spoiler that Snotlings might be coming. Basically, what it allows you to do is take two D3 plus one journeymen, uh, which are over, which can take your team over 16. So 100k to get on average, what's that, four, five? Five Snotlings? Now, in here, in this, five Snotlings worth 100k. So it's, it's evens, but more importantly, Hotlings, ha uh, Snotlings have disposable. So you get their team value back in petty cash. So if, as long as you've got five Snotlings, you should be able to buy riotous rookies, which is going to give you another five more. I mean, it might just give you three, but still. That mixed with the swarming ability, where you can deploy an extra D3 uh, snotlings on the pitch, is going to keep you well and truly in snotling numbers. We've also got Heady Brew, um, which uh, the coach of the team with this inducement may randomly select D3 players with a stunty skill currently on the pitch. For the remainder of the drive, those players gain dauntless frenzy and really stupid skills. So D3 of you guys are going to get a load of a load of sweet boosts. Okay, so what we do have is a Night Goblin Sports Shaman, which is a new wizard. Uh, this can be taken by Snotlings and Goblin Team. So let's have a quick look at their two spells. So Foot of Gork or Mork. Cast the spell immediately after your turn has ended, even if it ended with a turnover. So you're casting this at the end of your turn. Choose a target square anywhere on the pitch that is not occupied by a player. The foot of Gork or Mork moves in a straight line from the target square for three squares towards your opponent's end zone. Roll one dice to hit each standing player that occupies a square in the path of the foot of Gork or Mork. If it's a hit roll, is a three or more, the player is knocked down. If it's one or two, the player escapes. Make an armor roll uh, for any player that's knocked down as if they'd been knocked down by a player with mighty blow. If the player on the moving team is knocked down by the foot of Gork or Mork, the moving team does not tougher a turnover unless the spell, uh, unless the player was carrying the ball at the time. So you can use this. Basically, you just choose th what, three squares that are in line towards your opponent's end zone. And uh, on a three plus, you knock over each of those players and roll to armor with Mighty Blow. That's pretty good. Uh, we've also got Spore Cloud. Cast this spell at, any uh, at the start of any of your opponent's turns before anybody does anything. Target any opposition player on a 2+, plus. that player gains both the loner and really stupid skills. This lasts until the end of the drive. That's not terrible either. I'm obviously a massive fan of Fireball, but giving somebody loner and um, bonehead, uh, low, really stupid, uh, basically means on a 4+, plus they don't do stuff, and they have to roll another 4+, plus to get that sp to, to, to actually re-roll it if they fail. It's probably not quite as good as turning him into a frog, but... It will be good, and it will last until the end of the drive. And here we've just got the breakdown of the disposable skill and the swarming skill. We've already talked about swarming and, and disposable, actually. They're just basically the snotling players with disposable don't count their TV when you're calculating inducement cash. And swarming means you can set up uh, an extra D3 snotlings uh, with the swarming skill onto the line uh, whenever you set up for a drive. Sneaky gits as well. These guys can take half price bribes. Then you've got the coffin corner with just some bits of fluff, uh, and you, we we've got a uh, we've got a comic again. We've got a Bob Bifford comic. 
nice few pages there and then you've got just a bit of a brief on the back so uh, the spike although we know it is going out of date very very quickly there's loads of cool fluff in there and if you're planning on playing uh, Blood Bowl 2016 with Snotlings you've got to get it um, and it will just keep you up to date. So there we have it, the Snotling team release for Blood Bowl. I've already spoken about it as we've gone. The miniatures are really, really, really lovely. They are small, they are fiddly, so it's probably not a beginner's team, um, but they are definitely a painter's team. The dice are cool, not the clearest, but if you're a dice collector that doesn't matter anyway, they are good fun. The pitch is really lovely, um, probably one of my favourite ones from Games Workshop. The spike, as you probably know, will be out of date in three, four months or so, um, but we've already seen the rules for them in Blood Bowl 2020, and they look possibly even more fun uh, in season two, so don't let that put you off picking up your snotling gear for Blood Bowl. Uh, the spike is, it's got cool art, it's got cool stuff in it. I mean, if you, if you love Blood Bowl for a few extra quid, it is pretty entertaining. Just want to say a massive thank you again to Entoyment Games in Paul for letting us use their D&D room and uh, for allowing us to have a look at some of the stock nice and early. Um, if you are in the UK, they do a great online service. And if you are anywhere near Paul, which is in Dorset, um, come to some of our tournaments. So our next one is going to be Mega Bowl on the 31st of October on Halloween. Uh, it's a mixture of 11s and 7s. It's going to be here. Check our website, boneheadpodcast.com, for more information. For now, I am going to go paint my snotting team.